Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Los Angeles Public Library's YouTube and Facebook Live channels for another Teen Tastic Tuesday event uh, right here for teens. I just want to give a special thank you, shout out to the Library Foundation for helping to make today's program possible. So today we're joined by Lisa and Paolo from the Echo Park Film Council to learn more about how you can make your very own movies at home. Uh, did you know that the Los Angeles Public Library has a film festival just for teens? It's called the Teens of LA Film Festival, and you can learn more about it on our website. Let me put the link up right down here. You can learn more about the festival there. Um, if you are between the ages of 11 and 18, you can send us your short film in any of these categories. We have book trailer, public service announcement, experimental, short film, documentary, or micro short. Um, if you're interested, make sure you check out the link um, and check back as we get closer to the submission date, which um, Submissions are open starting June 1st, but that doesn't mean you can't start making your movie today or yesterday <laughs> or tomorrow. So um, just keep checking back there. Um, and this is actually the first in a series of three of these workshops um, with the Echo Park Film Center. So um, you can learn more about the various, the specific types of movies you can make um, throughout the next few months. Um, next month we have Express Yourself, which is about experimental films. That's on April 13th at 4 p.m. And on May 18th, also at 4 p.m., we have True Stories, which is about making documentary films. Um, but today we just have general movie making skills. And so let me stop talking and bring on Lisa and Paolo. Yay. Bum, ba, da, ba. The magic of the internet. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, LAPL. We love the libraries and we love our new teen audience. Hello, everybody. Teentastic Tuesdays. We're very excited to be here and um, we're excited to be presenting this workshop from the traditional unceded lands of the Tongva and Chumash people. And it is a privilege and a joy to live work and play on this land that has been uh, stewarded by the Tongva and the Chumash people for many, 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 many years. And so we are grateful to be here on this land with you today, although you may be Zooming uh, or uh, stream yarding in from anywhere around the world, but special shout out to our LA people. We're, what are we gonna talk about today, Paolo? What We're gonna talk about the play? movies because we love the movies. The movies, they make funny noises and they use funny cameras, and we're gonna talk about the movies. You know, we did a TED Talk years ago, and this is like a TED Talk for teens. It's like, isn't that, like that's alliteration for you, TED Talk for teens. It's true, but you can also interact with us by putting some questions or comments in the chat if you would like, so feel free. I know that Katie's monitoring the chat and um, can relay some questions to us. If you have them, this uh, session is also being archived, of course, so you can tell your friends, you can come back to it. But the point of today is really just starting to talk about movies, how to make movies. Maybe you're thinking about making a movie. Maybe you've always wanted to make a movie. Uh, maybe you've had some ideas percolating, but just don't know quite how to get started. And um, the Teen Fest, Teens of LA Festival, is a great opportunity to explore this and then you know make something that you can share with everybody through the festival. So that's the goal. Um, and today we're just going to talk a little bit about filmmaking in, in general. And because we love analog, I, I wrote stuff up. You know, we could have done this all like digitally, but it's more fun to write out signs. So how about a history of film in five minutes, Paolo? Can you do that? Do you think you can? We can do it. So, um, you know, oftentimes we're in a room or a classroom. I know in COVID, these are challenging times for all of us. And a lot of us are learning from computer screens. And so play along with us. If you're at home, you can shout out the answer to the question like Jeopardy, even though you can't buzz in. But Film, you know, we talk about dance and theater and music. All these art forms are thousands and thousands of years old, right? But film is still a young format. How old is it? I heard someone in, in Pacoima, someone just said about 100, a little over 100 years old, right? So at the turn of the last century, the last, 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 last. wow, a little bit of echo. That was amazing. It was like a little like VJ waka waka yeah. echo in my, in my room here. Um, so it's about a little more than 100 years old, and the technology at the very beginning was quite cost prohibitive in the sense that not everyone was telling stories, right? You needed money, you needed a certain privilege. Um, so it wasn't representational of the world we live in. And now as we enter a world where we're making films on a phone 
or a flip phone or a computer screen. It's democratized the way we tell stories. And we really believe, we'll talk about this later, but everyone is a storyteller, but not everyone has the tools to tell their stories. And now we're providing those tools. The LAPL is providing this wonderful festival, hopefully through your computer and gadgets you have at home, you're making your film. But back to the history. Film's a little over 100 years old. It started quite humongous. The cameras were the size of a, a small automobile and you'd have to wind up a big machine. And so the technology got smaller and smaller and smaller. A lot of it had to do with economics. Um, so people could make more money selling their cameras and their films. But it also, as we said earlier, democratized people's access. If the camera's smaller and more affordable, more people could tell stories. So um, where we that's where we are now in modern times. I held up a camera. This is from maybe the 60s or 70s. It makes a beautiful, funny noise. It's called a Super 8 camera. You may have heard things like 16 millimeter film. This is 16. See, it has sprockets and it has holes. It has still images on it. This is 35 millimeter film. Some of you maybe in traditional photography classes, 35 millimeter, but at least some are. I'm just talking a mile a minute. I'm gonna pass the baton to you. What else about history of film do we wanna to touch upon? Well, I was thinking maybe we could travel back in time and maybe we could just watch the very first film. Because as you said, you know, compared to things like painting, dance, music, um, some art forms that are, you know, so so old we can't even even begin to know when they emerge um you know cave paintings we're talking like thousands of years but um film's only you know about 120 something years old so let's travel back now um to the arrival of a train uh maybe we can bring that uh clip up now this is one of the first films ever and it's from uh 1895 as we can see so let's just take a look at this piece it's from the lumiere brothers they were uh brothers and yeah, let's go for it. Let's um, let's check this out. First film, one of the first films. Rival of a Train, Lumiere Brothers. Okay, so now maybe we can skip ahead to the year 2021. You know, that's part of the fun about film. It's really like time travel. And maybe we can watch a film called Right Up Our Alley that everyone's been talking about uh, lately. And so let's think about this film in comparison to the last piece that we saw. So thinking about 1895 to 2021 and just, um, you know, see what you notice about these two films. Maybe there's things that are similar and maybe there's things that are, are different. So. But I want to talk that, about that film because I a train arriving in a station, why is that special? What happened? We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Topic. Don't worry. Okay. So let's check this out uh, right up our alley um, from the year 2021. Yeah, we just got here. Come in now. Nice, dude. Was that a turkey? That easy? Yeah. All right, guys, let's go. Oh, in Europe. My foot wasn't over the line. Mark it eight, dude. This is bowling. There are rules. I'm not counting. Dude, I'm telling you, I bowled a perfect game. There's no way, too. man. I've seen you bowl gutter balls all the time. <laughs> Wow. 
All right, so we go from arrival of a train to um, right up our alley. So, so what did you notice about those two films, Paolo? Well, I'm just amazed you held on to that camera so hard. Lisa was sitting on this little airplane flying through the bowling alley. I don't know how you did it, and we shouldn't reveal those secrets, but. I did not make that film. That film was made by Jay Christensen, who was the camera operator, the drone operator for that, and Anthony Jaska, and that was uh, made in Minneapolis this year. So, um, but you know, when I'm looking at these two films, what I'm thinking of is that really nothing has changed in 120 years. They're both films that are about being in a certain place at a certain time. They could be called documentaries, although they were obviously also partly staged. Um, they're promoting things, right? They're promoting a new mo mode of cinema. They're all about technology. Back in 1895, like just a, an, a movie of a train coming into a station was mind blowing to people because they'd never seen a, a movie before. Can you imagine a life without movies? You know, if that was the first movie you ever saw, yeah, it was mind blowing. This train coming to you. The drone, we're blown away by that today. The, the technology is really the same in a way. They're just uh, from different eras. Beautiful. And, you know, yeah, exactly. As Lisa said, you know, prior to that first film, you know, theater was a very popular medium where people would go and, and actors would be defined by the physical space. And all of a sudden it changed these notions of physical space where it created the illusion of space, the illusion of perspective. And it really did change the way we see the world um, and, and capture images. So a lot of you were speaking to you. Hopefully you're watching this live or you're going to watch this in a couple of weeks. We do encourage you to you know, submit something to this wonderful festival. We, we never believe in competition in the sense that you're all beautiful, you're all important. Make work to make work. Make work to make yourself happy to share with your family. But also if you wanna submit it to a contest, you know, it's about celebrating all of your work together. So please think about, it. hopefully this inspires you to make work, but a lot of you are already creating work. I think you've grown up in an age where you feel very comfortable with this language. But we're gonna give you, we're gonna supplement the education you may already have brought to this uh, session with maybe some other things that are that are missing. So let's take it away, Lisa Mar. Well, exactly. And what what is the common denominator in any film? It starts with an idea, right? So we talked about these a little bit. These are the, the categories for the festival coming up. So book trailer. So what would a book trailer be, Paolo? What's a trailer? Well, trailer, you know, I think more commonly we know movie trailers. We can't wait to see the next movie trailer. But what about let's make the books is, is important, even more important than movies. Let's do a book trailer, something to get us excited about something that's coming out. So, yeah, it'd be a little short film about a, maybe an upcoming book or maybe a book that's already out. But it's sort of like a little commercial for the book that makes people want to read the book. So any your favorite book, you could make a short film about that. PSA, what's a PSA? What does that stand for? I think public service announcement. So you know, things that maybe mental health awareness, um, gender identities, things that are in our society that we want to be more appreciative of or more understanding of, you know, ways to communicate information, nonprofits, other organizations that might need a little, a little boost. Yeah, exactly. Letting people know about important issues that they should know more about, uh, raising awareness, all that kind of stuff. Experimental cinema, we're going to talk about next week. And experimental cinema is really about, it's, it's as much about the form as it is about the content. And we'll talk about that soon, but it's really about kind of the tactile nature of a film in a way that film is almost more connected to art or painting than it might be to cinema as we traditionally know it in the big uh, theater sense. Short film, what's a short film? It's not a long film. It's a short film. It's a short film. So we're talking like five minutes or less. I think three to five minutes is what we're talking about here. Documentary. What's a documentary? A well, film that's, about you know, that, we're going to spend a whole class time talking about that. But in essence, to document something in life. But we can talk about what that means, but to record an aspect of life. Let's say. Awesome. That's a good definition. Something about life. Yeah. And a micro short. Micro short is really short. So that's a film that's only 30 to 60 seconds long. So we're gonna look at a couple of those coming up just to give you some ideas. But you know, there can be, you know, there's animated films, there's funny films, there's serious films, there's dramatic films, um, you know, all these things, but they could be in any one of these categories, you know, could have a different vibe to it and you can use different techniques. So we'll get into that, you know, more a bit later, but let's look at some of the commonalities. To every film. Lisa, what is I like the skateboard. Could I make a film about my, my friends and I skateboarding? Yes, you could make a film yeah, about skateboarding. Okay. And that film could be 
you know, it could be a fiction film. It could be a, a narrative. It could just be a made up story. It could be a documentary. It could yeah. be a PSA about why there should be more skate parks. Maybe, uh, maybe there's a book about skateboarding. It could be the, you know, the book trailer. It could be a micro short. See, skateboarding could be any kind of movie. You could make any kind of movie about, um, ab around skateboarding and the skateboard could be even the star of the movie, Ooh. right? Day in the life of a skateboard. That'd be pretty, that, that'd be a good movie. So, but what do all movies have? I'm giving you the, the answer right now. They're images, right? Some kind of image. Usually, you know, why is it called a movie? Because it's about a moving image, right? Instead of a, as opposed to a photograph. But there's plenty of movies that contain still images. Um, so it could be a still, it could, it could be a non-moving movie. Does that make sense? Sure, why not? Um, but you gotta have some kind of image, generally. Even if it's a blank screen, there's some movies with blank screens. It's still an image, if you get what I'm saying. It's kind of a non-image image. Same with what? What's the other component? We, if we got an image, what do we also usually have in a movie? The other thing, Paolo, any ideas? I would say sound. I would say you know we like to use try to use as many senses as we can. Some people with with some limitations may have other ways of viewing films, and we want to accommodate those ways of seeing and hearing and and enjoying entertainment, of course, right? Yeah, so usually there's some kind of uh, sound. What kind of sound could there be in a movie? You know, we could have music. Brrr, so maybe I play in a band or I love, I'm a DJ and I just want to do my band playing live music. That could be great. It could be music. There's also talking, dialogue. Right now, Lisa and I are dialoguing. We're yeah. talking. What are some other sound uh, effects maybe? Sound effects, yeah. There could be something called ambient sound, which is where you're just kind of recording the sound. Like if you're, your film's about being in a forest, maybe walking through the forest, you might just have the sound of the forest. So we don't necessarily need to have people talking. They could be talking. They could, there could be written dialogue. Um, we could just be capturing the sounds of real life. We could just be capturing life as it unfolds, a conversation between two people. Uh, could be um, voiceover. So just images and then someone talking sort of off the screen, maybe guiding us through something. Um, but what there could also be no sound. There could be silence, right? And so sometimes it's beautiful just to see our images. And if we think back to uh, the arrival of a train, the Lumiere brothers, um, that was a silent film. Someone was playing piano later. Back in the day, they would have had live music, which you can also have with your films. You can have live music. Um, but when you're submitting it to the festival, it's probably gonna be submitted digitally. So in that case, you could choose to just have it silent. That would be cool. And also think um, about, you know, when we talk about sound, we also maybe talk about language. Is the film, in, is your native language Spanish? Is your native language Cantonese? Do you wanna have English subtitles? Um, these are all things to consider. There's no right or wrong. It's really who is your audience? Why are you making a film? What do you wanna gain from this film? What do you wanna share about your experience? Cause your experience is powerful and beautiful. And how do you wanna share that with the world? So all things to consider. Yeah, it is really a new world, this digital world, because the film you make can be seen and um, shared with people all over the world instantly. You know, people are using their films and other very portable devices to make powerful documentaries about the world we live in, to share information and knowledge, to tell amazing stories, to, um, you know, just get their thoughts out to a global audience. So there's never been a better time in a lot of ways to make movies and share those films. So what is the, what's another word for what your story is about, Paolo? What would you say? Um, inspiration, passion. No, <laughs> yeah. give me a clue, yeah. give me a clue. Content, well the Content, done. the content of your film. So that's what your film's about. So when you're thinking of like, what is my idea? What is this film about? That's kind of like, we could also say that's the content, right? So, you know, generally it could be about, again, my skateboard, my awesome skateboard crew. It could be the way I make dinner with my grandma every Friday night, just the two of us. It's our time in the week. It could be about, you know, um, I don't know, school closures. It could be about people experiencing homelessness. It could be just about me walking around my neighborhood, but that's what my film is about. So generally the film is about something. Even if it's about nothing, it's still about being about nothing, if that makes sense. And this feels so, good. And I can hear from the audience, people cheering all over the world. And I feel your love. We got about 10 minutes just for you and I, just to give us some parameters, but let's keep going. That's why we're going. This, this is like a very quick overview today. So um, the form, 
So the form, we talked a bit about this with the experimental um, filmmaking, but you know, there's the content about what your story is about, and then there's how you tell the story. So that's kind of like the form. So, you know, is it very quick cuts? Is it one single long shot? It could be about your camera movement. It could be about kind of the emotion. Is this like a real uh, tear jerker of a movie? Is it a comedy? Um, am I using my phone? Am I using still images? Am I using found footage? We're going to get to that in a minute. Like, what am I using to tell my story? So when you're planning your film, you want to kind of write out your story. That's sometimes called a treatment, what the story's about. And then you want to kind of put together a little filming schedule. And that's kind of where the nuts and bolts come in. So, um, so we're starting with this again. We're reminding everyone that everyone has a story to tell what's yours. So that's where we start from because we've all got a story. And to tell you the truth, this is a bit of a secret, but the story you have to tell is actually way more interesting than uh, most of what uh, Hollywood um, is cooking up out there. So, um, you know, just enjoy, enjoy your own story, dive deep and, and think about like, what do you really want to share with the world? Because this is the, the truly interesting stuff. This is what it is to be a creative human in the 21st century. And we want you to succeed. So set your goals and try to achieve them. Maybe you don't need the helicopter and the car crashes and the chases, but maybe you need, like Lisa said, your grandmother to be free one afternoon when you can cook mole together and you eat something you grew up with and you love the taste. And maybe that's as, as wonderful as it needs to be. So, you know, we want you to succeed and you will. So. Yeah. And again, these are little time capsules. People will be seeing these films that you're making for years and years to come. You will be watching them probably later on. Maybe your family will, maybe you'll have a laugh about like the things that you thought and the things that you did when you were much younger. Maybe it will turn out to be kind of a prophecy for the future. Maybe you'll think like, wow, I was really, you know, I was, I had it together back then and look at all the things I was thinking of. Maybe it's sort of like a diary. Maybe it's just a moment of life on earth in the year 2021 during a global pandemic. You know, the, the, the time will continue to flow, but these little markers are kind of like little time capsules that we can revisit and they're little bits of um, cinematic wonder that continue to inspire and delight people you know for years to come so if we're thinking about making our film you can basically divide the process into three parts plus an extra part the first, what's the first part Paolo um, you need to you were thinking we're thinking we're writing down on paper so we're the pre-production we haven't started making the film and we're planning we're plotting we're thinking pre-production so we're doing it right now. The fact that you showed up today and you're watching this video, you're in pre-production. Pre-production. So anything that happens before you yell, roll it, action, you know, just, yeah, doing your research, you're thinking, you're planning, all that stuff. Then what comes next? If we we start with pre-production, what's the next one, Paula? Well, I think we, we, we got to make our movie. So we're producing, we're making, we're action, production. Let's do it. So we've thought it, we've written it down, now we're going, we're, we're brrr, the camera's making sounds, we're capturing images, we're capturing sounds, we're gathering everything like a beautiful recipe, a lot of food analogies today, we're, we must be hungry, but we're I'm making a hungry. delicious soup, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of love, and then boom, we're making it. Chef's kiss, perfect. So, um, you know, we could be using a camera, but maybe we're not using a camera. Maybe we're doing animation and we're doing drawings and things like that. So production doesn't necessarily mean like roll it camera. It just means everything we're doing um, to make our film. So that could be recording sounds. It could be doing our interviews. It could be, um, you know, capturing images with a camera, a still camera, a motion picture camera, a film camera, a digital camera. Uh, could be animating things, could be cutting things out of magazines. You know, whatever we're using to make the movie, that's production. And then what happens? Oh, and the gear. So a lot of people are like, get a little bit like, you know, upset about gear. Like what, what's the best camera to use? And the best camera to use is the one you've got. And if you don't have a camera, make a cameraless film, just do some drawings. You don't even need a camera to make a, make a movie. So that's that. And then um, what's next? Editing, post-production when you put it all together. So there's all kinds of editing programs. There's online stuff. There's stuff that's um, free. You can use it on your phone. You can use it on a computer. Um, you can just capture it. You can also do something called in-camera editing where you don't edit at all. Just as you're shooting, you just shoot it in the order you want to show it. Then you don't got to edit at all, which is amazing. That's called in-camera editing, post-production. And then, of course, you must show it. Show it. Show it, show it, show it, show it. So that could be at a festival like Teens of LA. It could be in your backyard to your family. It could be online to a global audience. It could be via social media. Um, you know, there's many, many ways to show our film, but that's the fun part about 
filmmaking is we don't create in a vacuum, we create to share, to have a dialogue, um, to get excited by all that. So resources, just a few resources. LAPL is an amazing place because what do they got? It's all about movies. If you wanna make movies, watch movies. They've got, you can get Canopy for free with your library card, amazing. Just watch amazing. a bunch of movies, get inspired. They've got the LAPL photo collection. So if you wanna just use existing materials like photos from LA from the past like 200 years, they've got them, they're incredible. And even just for inspiration, it's great to kind of just, you know, page through those. Lynda.com is also comes with your library card and they have tutorials on everything filmmaking, all kinds of editing programs and all that stuff. It's super rad. And then there's books and there's two cool books that we use at the Film Center, Bill Brown's book called Action, and it's sort of a guide to film video making, amazing. And Andrea Richards, Girl Director. They're both amazing filmmakers, they're both amazing people, and they've written awesome books that you can access at the library. With your Lisa, library I don't have a lot of money. How much does the library card cost me? It's free. It's amazing. It's free. You're kidding me. Yeah. Free. All that's There's free. There's so much free. stuff on there. It is free. And what else is free? Echo Park Film Center. So this is where uh, we work and we're part of a group of 20 folks that um, bring uh, film resources and education and screenings to you. And for teens, it's free. We've got an, a Vimeo page with tons and tons, like hundreds of films made by teens. So look at the work that your peers are making, as well as the work by famous filmmakers. Look at other teen work. That's amazing. It's inspiring. And uh, workshops, film video workshops for teens free. So you can go to uh, echoparkfilmcenter.org and find out more about that. You're always welcome. So we have a couple of minutes. Let's watch a couple of films. Woo. That was like so fast. That, that was, was like, fun. you don't need to go to film school. You can watch this 30 minute LAPL thing and you got right. it. So we got a few extra minutes. So let's watch some films. We're going to watch some short films. So this one was made by Miles Christ. He was 11 years old when he made this film, this was a few years ago, and he loves Alfred Hitchcock, and this is a cutout animation, he cut out a, a little, um, you know, cut out figures uh, as an homage to the famous filmmaker, Alfred Boy. Hitchcock. North by Northwest. Amazing. Good Amazing. Evening. And it's so short, you just want to play it again right away. Like, you know, that was incredible. Miles worked on that for a long time. That is the secret of animation. It does take a bit of time, but it's very zen and you can do all kinds of cool stuff, right? Just by, that's just paper, construction paper, cut out with scissors and photograph. You, you, you know, photograph it, move it a little, photograph it some more. Amazing. 11 years old, Miles. Thank you, Miles. Okay, the next film we're gonna see is called Garden Bandit by Ashley Ruiz, another um, cutout animation piece. So let's check this one out. It's sort of a PSA for guerrilla gardening. There's everything you need to know about guerrilla gardening right there. You can make a homemade seed bomb. It's basically just some seeds and some dirt. And you just kind of put it in a, you know, out in the yard or a vacant lot or a park and then flowers grow. So it's kind of a way of spreading the, the joy. And all, all told to you without any voiceover, just a little raccoon showing you the way. And uh, that's it. That's a PSA. And those, uh, I just want to say, those films were two of maybe 10,000. We've worked with for 20 years all over the county and all over the, the United States and all over the world now, um, inspiring people to make films about their lives. So those are two of many that have been made. And when we opened the Film Center 20 years ago, filmmaking was one of the least democratic art forms for the producer. 
It was before the cell phone re revolution and the digital revolution. And now it's become more democratized. We started off our presentation saying that. So a lot of you are using platforms like TikTok and, and other places, YouTube, and that's exciting. But channel that energy into a film film that you wanna to present to your peers through the LAPL. It would be so much fun at the end of this journey if we had a bunch of lovely films that you could share with the world. So we're about at our time. So I want to- I think we're going to see one time. more. Yeah, let's just watch one more to head so out. We're going to- Yeah, let's do it. Uh, yeah. So this film was made quite a few years ago, but what I find interesting about it is it includes things like found footage, home movies, uh, newly shot footage. And even though it was made, I think in the year 2011, um, there's a lot of things about the environment and, and other topics in this film that still feel very fresh today, 10 years later. So let's take a look at this piece by Sarah. Only you can prevent water fire. All right, so hopefully this has given you a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of food for thought, a little bit of um, maybe some new ideas for ways you can go about making your own film. And um, we are a resource for you, Echo Park Film Center, LAPL. And we're gonna be back next month um, with a specific workshop about experimental film. So- um, April 13th. Yeah, April 13th. Oh, we have one or two audience questions and we have time. Okay. Oh my gosh, no way, I love it. Question. Yeah. What app do we use to make the movie? Well, I would say that um, there are a whole bunch of apps out there and whichever ones you know that you uh, can find and, and use, all apps are welcome. All apps are good. Maybe next time what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of research for some possible apps you can use. Um, but, uh, you know, I like free. Free is always good. You don't need to spend a lot of money on this. There's lots of free apps on um, for phone, uh, for smartphones and for computers. And, and you can start with those. There's some animation programs out there. But, yeah, we'll, we'll um, come up with a few good ideas for you. There's something called Frame Thief. Um, and also, I, I think, yeah, because, James, I, I know, like, specifically, you know, we're not promoting certain, you know, specific companies or other things. I think there's many apps out there, many things you can do that are free, like Lisa said. So, but I mean, one was already mentioned, Frame Thief. But you know, talk to your peers and talk to your friends. Free is good, and um, and fun is is accessible. But that is such a reflection of the time we live in, right? Because someone is asking, how do I make a film on my phone with an app or my iPad or whatever device you're using, right? So that's fascinating. Yeah. And sometimes your computers or your phones come with with apps already installed. So you know, start there. If they're again, whatever's free, start with the free, and then work your way out. DaVinci Resolve is a good free editing program. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That is true. And DaVinci Resolve is becoming, you know, quickly becoming industry standard. So the skills that you're learning in these, um, you know, exercises when you're making your own film, they're actually also marketable skills, which is really even a bonus, right? And um, it's interesting that a lot of free software is becoming what they call industry standard, that a lot of people that are making movies professionally are using the same software that you as a you know a brand new teenage filmmaker would also be using. So that's pretty cool too. And then search in your, your grandmother's attic for an old Super 8 film camera, and you could make a movie on film film too, which would be dynamite, right? 
Um, we offer those classes at the film center. We're not trying to tempt you and excite you in these difficult COVID times. But once things open up, and if you're based in Los Angeles, please find us at boom, the Echo Park Film Center.org, because we would love to continue this dialogue on the 13th of April and then the 18th of May, and then for our big festival in summertime. One last question from Isabel. How long does it usually take to film and write a movie? You know, that is a good question. And the answer really, Premier Rush is good. Okay, wow, wow. we're getting all kinds of resources. Thanks for sharing open. Yeah. With everybody. Yeah, amazing. But, you know, it can take, I've made a film in 10 minutes. I've made a film that's taken me, you know, 10 years. I'm still working on it. So um, there's really no time frame. It's really up to you. And um, follow your heart. Follow your creative practice. Explore see where your creative impulses lead you. And that's the beauty of filmmaking is that there's no right or wrong. It's just um, a path of exploration. So be open to it. And um, yeah, check back in with us next month and let's hear how everybody's doing with their with their um, pre-production planning. And uh, yeah, express yourself 413. That also happens to be my birthday. So I'm gonna be eating some Whoa. cake with y'alls and um, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about movies and and getting together and that's all the things I love so what better birthday could I have we will see you uh, on April 13th for express yourself experimental films but bring all your questions about all your films all films are beautiful you are all beautiful get out there and make some movies and we can't wait to see them thanks everybody thank you